Good afternoon. Uh, welcome to another LBMA webinar. As part of our virtual summit series, we have a panel who will be discussing both Switzerland's public and private support for ASM, focusing on complexities and challenges, exploring the effect of initiatives currently taking place and reflecting on the key factors necessary for cooperation across the supply chain. We will hear from Monica Rubiolo, Head of Trade Promotion at uh, the Swiss State Secretariat for Economic Affairs, SECO. Uh, Monica leads SECO's efforts to foster trade in developing countries that is socially responsible, environmentally friendly, inclusive and sustainable. Uh, this includes supporting framework conditions for sustainable trade, enhancing international competitiveness and market access of SMEs and producers alike and also strengthening a resource efficient private sector in partner countries. We will also hear from Diana Kulilas, uh, Secretary General at Swiss Better Gold Association. Uh, Diana leads the SBGA, a pioneering network of industry, finance and service providers representing the Swiss gold industry, which supports sustainable development of artisanal small scale miners and establishes responsible gold value chains. Um, from these operations to end market. Uh, and finally, we will hear from Jose Ramon Camino, uh, General Counsel at Metalor Technologies SA. Jose has been working as a lawyer at the Swiss multinational company since 2014 and has since become a member of its executive committee. He is responsible for the legal, compliance and communications affairs for the Metalor Group. Uh, if you have any questions throughout this webinar, please feel free to write them into the questions tab on the side panel or along the bottom of your screen if you're using a mobile device. And our panelists will try to answer these at the end, should there be time. However, for now, I shall hand over to Neil Harvey uh, to open up the discussion. Okay, thank, thank you, Taylor. And again, th thank you for, for Jose and Diana for joining us today. Unfortunately, uh, Monica um, from SECO couldn't join us today, uh, but we, we had a discussion about this webinar and we thought, even though um, Monica couldn't be here, I, th I think the message that we're trying to get across here was, was such an important, and it's such an important time to be spreading this message that in terms of ASM and in terms of the LBMA and um, responsible sourcing, and making sure that ASM gets into the responsible supply chains. This, this message that we're trying to get across today is that it is important that we, we support ASM, uh, responsible ASM, but it's also important to highlight um, initiatives that are working. And I, I think there's, there's no better example of that than, than, than what SECO and the SBGA are doing here. So that's why the LBMA is really happy to be hosting this webinar today. And um, I really look forward to, to hearing um, what the panelists have to say. But like I say, Monica unfortunately can't be with us today, but she's kindly um, put together a, a short video, which really sets out um, uh, where, where SECO is on, on this particular project. So with that, Taylor, if you could start um, uh, Monica's video. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Monica Rubiola. I'm the head of trade promotion with the Swiss State Secretariat for Economic Affairs. It's a pleasure for me to be here and to contribute to this webinar of LBMA. Uh, let me first start thanking LBMA for this opportunity uh, to share with you some of our experiences with artisanal and small-scale mining. Um, and let me start by saying that we uh, absolutely support the OECD and LBMA call for action to um, work together and protect artisanal and small-scale mining, which is really a sector heavily under pressure through the impact of the pandemic. We know there are 4 million, more than 40 million people affected by this, and people that were already uh, part of a very vulnerable group. In my contribution today, I will try to explain um, how Switzerland supports artisanal and small-scale mining, what is our role in this uh, specific sector, and at the same time explain you some of the features of the initiative we are supporting, a specific public-private partnership called Better Gold Initiative. 
The part of my presentation will cover this uh, first P, so the public part, uh, and will explain how we collaborate together with the private sector. Uh, they will be contributing later on, explaining the other P in this uh, partnership. There are several reasons for Switzerland's engagement in uh, global commodity trading, and you know that this is a sector of particular importance for Switzerland, um, among other things because of historical reasons. So it's a, a country with a long tradition in commodity trading, and in particular in gold trading. But with this uh, role uh, at the international level, there are also responsibilities that come along um, in terms of uh, things like human rights, environmental protection, um, and also tackling corruption, which can be associated with the phenomena of uh, the resource culture, as it is widely known uh, for extractive uh, producing countries. So, because of these reasons, the Swiss Federal Council started uh, to publish regularly a commodity uh, report which is trying to provide several recommendations to address the problems and the challenges in these sectors. And this is around uh, five specific topics and issues. First of all, transparency, um, uh, providing a number of measures in order to increase transparency and facilitate transparency. The second point is enhancing competitiveness, because we know that for artisanal small-scale miners, to be able to compete uh, in global terms, competitiveness needs to be uh, available. Supporting also innovation, the third pillar of, uh, of the recommendations, in order to seize the opportunities that uh, new technologies go provide to facilitate transparency and traceability. Uh, of course, at the same time, enhancing the overall sustainability, which is the fourth pillar of uh, the recommendations, uh, in the long term of the whole value chain, and uh, as a first important pillar, supporting dialogue. Dialogue with the different stakeholders that contribute and participate in this value chain. So for all these reasons, artisanal and small-scale mining is a particular priority for the Swiss Development Corporation, um, and we try to support the sector through several bilateral and multilateral interventions. I will be uh, explaining later more in detail one of these bilateral interventions, the Better Gold Initiative, but let me just give another example. Uh, also at the multilateral level, we cooperate with some of the uh, developing banks in order to support the sectors. And one very specific initiative, which is currently uh, contributing um, in a significant manner to tackle the impact of the pandemic is a multi-donor trust fund called EGPS, Extractive Global Programmatic Support, which is implemented uh, by the World Bank and has developed a particular window to support ASM uh, in the aftermath of the pandemic. SECO has launched some years ago uh, the Better Gold Initiative for Artisanal and Small Scale Mining. As I said, this is an initiative implemented together with the Swiss Better Gold Association and therefore a public-private partnership for supporting the sustainable development of gold value chain in three countries where the initiative works, Peru, Colombia and Bolivia. Uh, the initiative is organized through uh, three components. The first one, providing technical assistance and uh, support to uh, specific mining operations which have the potential to improve the performance in terms of uh, technical, organizational, social, and environmental aspects, and by advancing them towards uh, certification, working very closely together with uh, the three main certification systems, Fair Trade, Fair Mind, and the Responsible Jewelry Council uh, certification. The second component uh, provides support to the local counterparts, to policymakers, and organize the policy dialogue in order to uh, ensure the alignment of the initiative with the specific national policies for formalization and legalization of the artisanal and small-scale sector. 
And the third component is the uh, real link to the private sector in Switzerland is uh, channeling the demand for artisanal and small scale mining from the uh, stakeholders in Switzerland from these three countries. The DGI uh, is a very special, innovative and pioneer initiative because it combines uh, these three components um, in two uh, dimensions. It's not a purely developmental project and it's not a purely market-based project, but it's combining these three two aspects in, uh, in our view in a very responsible way. So we are very glad to see what the results of these partnerships are. Um, throughout the years, we have been able to export 5,000 kilograms uh, gold produced by ASM miners under uh, good conditions, under sustainable uh, gold production conditions. This initiative has been benefiting 5,000 miners in a direct form, but because of all the uh, families that are involved and, and other providers, uh, we calculate around 25,000 uh, indirect beneficiaries from this initiative, which is quite a, a good result. And um, more than that, what we have seen is that the participant miners have proven to be resilient even uh, during the pandemic. Uh, we have been uh, very fast in reacting to the pandemic in providing the support to the miners when they were requesting that, and also to the government's uh, partners in these three countries. And the BGI was able to provide very timely support, uh, be it in the form of food packages or supporting the implementation of uh, biosecurity protocols and hygiene uh, measures in the three countries. And it has been very, uh, very good to see that uh, the miners participating ha have stayed with the initiative uh, while in other countries we have seen that the value chains were completely disrupted, um, the miners and the, uh, the mines participating in BGI have stayed with this initiative um, and have been very grateful for the support. So this is uh, really showing that when you accompany uh, the stakeholders uh, throughout the journeys, which may be difficult as the, currently, the current pandemic, it is possible to, to preserve the value chains and to continue the work that is, of course, not completely done. But we are very, uh, very uh, hopeful for the future, and we think that the initiative can continue to provide support to ASM in the future. Okay. Um, if obviously, if Monica was on this call now, I would be thanking her for for her contribution. But I'll, I'll make sure that um, she she just um I realize how much we appreciate her, her contribution i think it's a good, very good introduction to what to what the the next two speakers are going to talk about but also it's there's some words that she uses which um are after my own heart words words like transparency and, and sustainability and I, I think that's very important and this is something i've been saying for a long time something the lbma supports is initiatives that are sustainable and that, I think that's a key key point here. Sustainable, not just during the good times, but sustainable during the, the, the difficult times. Um, our, our next contributor, speaker, panelist um, is Diana from from the Swiss Better Gold Association. And um, Diana is going to give a short presentation on really the the actual work that the that the Better Gold Initiative is, is doing. So if I could hand over to Diana.
perhaps we could um, hand over to Jose just just in the interim while we're waiting for um, uh, Diana to amend her audio and visual, if that would be okay, Neil. Uh, I think I'm back on the line. Can you can can you hear me? Okay. Uh, yeah. Thank. Thank you, Taylor. Um, yes, Diana, I, yes, I can hear I'm you. Back. So, so well, well yes, welcome. Yes. Good. So, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's that's uh, that's a live event. What we call it. So, <laughs> you know, in the in the action of it. So, thank you very much for for hosting us today, uh, Diana Kelly, Les Swiss Better Gold Association. Just uh, uh, maybe um, wanted to go through a few uh, slides regarding our association. It's a very small uh, association, so I think it's worth introducing it a little bit. Um, Taylor, next slide, please. Oh, I think we lost everyone. Uh, Neil, you're back. I, I, I think you can proceed. Um, the, the, the people yes, are still. No, okay. Okay. Watching. So okay. Yes. Uh, so uh, so Swiss Better Gold is a non-profit association which has been created by the private businesses uh, in Switzerland active in the gold uh, supply chain. So those industry players who uh, source, produce, uh, well. Uh, refine, manufacture, and manipulate uh, the gold. Uh, it has been created in 2013, as just uh, Monica mentioned, in a pub, in a in a in a intent to s support artisanal uh, miners in improving their working practices and uh, enabling them to establish commercial routes to Switzerland to uh, to channel this responsibly produced gold to the members of the association. Um, we work uh, in a cooperation with SECO indeed as on the public-private partnership. Here we represent the, the second P of the of the PPP. And uh, um, so we are uh, working now in three countries, Peru, Colombia and Bolivia. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, can Okay, thank you. Uh, we work on a, uh, on a continuous improvement uh, approach. Uh, we have developed an, an escalator model uh, because we think uh, that artisanal mining needs a continuous support to reach uh, certain criteria uh, uh, that we, we, the private sector, we can say uh, eligible, uh, responsible uh, criteria. So uh, it goes through a, a, a continuous um, process of uh, accompanying the mine uh, through this uh, continuous improvement escalator, as we call. So they receive the technical assistance of the Better Gold Initiative on the ground. So this is very practical, uh, very um, uh, local approach. So, and uh, 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 there is a, a process of a maximum of 24 months uh, through which the mining operations go climb on the escalator uh, until uh, becoming eligible Swiss Better Gold suppliers or having an optional uh, third uh, step of the escalator, which are the certifications, uh, Fair Trade, Fair Mind, RGC, that also Monica mentioned. Uh, through the escalator, what we wanted to, to do is not only accompany the miners uh, on a continuous way, but also uh, offer these miners uh, a specific incentive at each stage of escalator so that the, there is some interest, continuous interest in remaining within the system and continue climbing the escalator. So there are different uh, um, motivating factors uh, at every stage. And uh, so this is how we, we try to build this being very practical, very pragmatic. Next slide, please. Uh, another element which is uh, very in interesting uh, of the Better Gold Initiative, our approach, is that we developed a, a, um, an incentive, a system of incentives uh, that we, we really want to be a self-sustainable uh, system. So uh, every gram of gold uh, sold through the system generates one uh, uh, one dollar per, per sold gram, and that that dollar is reinvested into the into the whole setting. So there is 70% which go 
for the the producing mine in for specifically social and environmental projects uh, 15% go for the technical assistance of those mines who are yet on the early stage of the escalator and they still need the technical assistance to be eligible better gold producers. And there is also another 15% which go for the SPJ cost, but also for the verification cost. So that it's really a fully self-sustainable, uh, as in the watchmaking industry, one would say a self-winding mechanism. Now, uh, uh, next slide, please. So, uh, why maybe a very sh few words, maybe the next one, very few words why artisanal small-scale mining, uh, why the private businesses are interested in sourcing artisanal gold, why is, is it becoming so important that we, 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 we see creation of, of initiatives like uh, the Swiss Better Gold Association uh, um, happening is because Maybe a few things that we all know, but nevertheless, uh, that artisanal gold represents 20% of the world gold, and we can't ignore it. It's, it's, uh, it's a lot. It's almost a quarter of the world gold. It employs 80% of its workforce in the mining, so it is 40 million people, and we can't ignore that. Also, uh, there is more and more um, the private businesses are more and more questions questioned on uh, uh, GRC, the, the governance risk and compliance, what kind of policies, what kind of strategies they have in that respect, what kind of corporate social responsibility policies they have. And that is something that uh, it matures a little bit also in the private businesses and also the PPP, but this time for the people, for profit and planet. So again, uh, uh, private businesses are more and more conscious about the ASM sector and they really want to make their contribution into that sector. Uh, next slide, please. So now uh, coming to maybe more specific, uh, the question of the COVID. So I think when we speak about artisanal small scale mining, very often we forget that these are typical small and medium enterprises. And the problems that this sector has, it is very specific, very specific to, the, to this sector. It is uh, a, a very fragile, light management uh, structures. They have difficulties in, in securing finance, they have to maintain the profitability within very small margins, and they also need to maintain the key stuff. So these are across any industry, these are the typical problems that small and medium enterprises face. And ASM is in that scenario. So, and now during the COVID, additionally to these problems, typical problems, we saw also a lot of problems specific to the pandemic. Uh, so they, where they, they had to deal with the sanitary uh, situation. We had to approve uh, or implement biosecurity protocols. The production declined. And uh, well, it is already difficult for them to maintain the profitability profitability, but with decreased uh, production and processing volumes, it is yet more critical for them. Transportation logistics, well, I, I think we all we, we all know how difficult it was and it is still uh, during this period to export transport, gold, etc. So it was very challenging. Of course, we had to review all the agendas for uh, uh, maintaining the, the due diligence, on-site visits, certification, all sorts of uh, uh, agendas. Everything has been completely changed. And of course, we also saw the demand fluctuation. So under this situation for us the main challenge and the main priority was to maintain all the supply chains operational uh, so to to really to to act in a way that we maintain this and we there is no drop off next slide please so Thank you. So in, in order to maintain this, in order to achieve that goal, to preserve these supply chains, we have developed very short, uh, very quickly after the beginning of the pandemic, uh, short term and long term uh, actions uh, where uh, we, we, we analyzed the supply chains, we analyzed the needs of these uh, producers, and we were been uh, able to respond to these specific needs. So in, in cer certain circumstances, it was about food parcels. Mm -hmm. In other circumstances, it was about uh, biosecurity protocols and their implementation. Uh, it could be also, like we did in Colombia, the payment of salaries and social contribution for the workers, so to preserve the know-how. And 
the day the operations are back to normal, that they can still count with their workforce. Uh, uh, and uh, we also uh, learned uh, how to deliver our technical assistance, the BGI on the ground, through the remote coaching and remote health and safety trainings, protocols and, and, and admin support. So, for example, in Peru, uh, uh, mining operations were um, able to apply for uh, certain uh, sub subsidies from the government, but they needed help on, on to even to fill in those demands. So the BGI team on the ground was really helping them to go through this uh, difficult uh, time. Next slide, please. And then also, of course, we have to mention the more longer term uh, uh, actions and medium long term actions that we, we also had to uh, think of and maybe sometimes readjust again with the aim of maintaining all the supply chains. So we, of course, continued the, the dialogue with our producers so to understand exactly what they really needed and support them for this uh, um, appropriate with appropriate actions. It was uh, many uh, meetings were maintained uh, virtually, of course, so, yeah, I think we, we all learned a lot of, of, of that. So we, we also did uh, virtual trainings so, so that to avoid the operations drop off the, of the system, we maintained the, those which are in the process of the continuous improvement escalator. All the trainings that could be delivered uh, virtually and through online trainings, we all we, we did all that. So of course the field activities have been suspended, but at least that activity is running, and we maintain the dialogue with the miners. Uh, so and of course we continued working on establishing the commercial routes. Uh, so the, all the discussions with the traders, refiners, the operations, logistic companies, all of that, we, we really maintain that uh, uh, all the time open. And uh, uh, so in, in the first weeks, maybe the logistics were hectic and difficult, but even in those difficult circumstances, we managed to fluidify this and to really establish uh, uh, very uh, regular e uh, exports. And uh, so through through that, I mean, we really, from our side as a private uh, sector, we really managed to, to confirm our support to the to this uh, sector, so that we really we are engaged with them and we work with them through the period. Um, I think uh, I think that is more or less all from my, from my side. Uh, Neil, back to you. OK, so thank, thank you, Diana. And uh, at the risk of repeating myself, um, sorry, you repeating yourself. Um, mm -hmm. In this in the current climate, there are a lot of initiatives out there trying to help ASM. What would be the key factors in the SBGA's initiative, which has made it successful, where others are currently struggling? Uh, I think I would maybe identify two key factors. One, which is the proximity. Uh, so the BGI team uh, uh, in the three countries, is the, the teams are on the ground and they really assess the needs very specifically to each operation, what is being needed. So, I mean, the, the fact that this, this proximity exists, that's, I think that's a, a very important element. And the second element, I think the solidarity and, and, the, and the engagement that the private businesses showed through the pandemic, that we do not drop, but we, I mean, there are difficulties, but we will face this together. And this fact together, that we are together, I think that is a very important element that we can see from the 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 feedbacks with the miners we have that that is something that they really appreciate because they are not just producers anymore they are part of the supply chain they are suppliers and that that means a relationship and that this relationship has not been suspended it is there to stay okay excellent now that that's really good to hear and it's going to sound like we've rehearsed this because that neatly uh, lead segues into our next speaker, um, Jose at Metalo, because um, it's, you, and I, I noticed on one of your slides, all of the Swiss LBMA GDL refineries are part of this project, and that's really good to see. But yeah, I'd like, I'd like to hear, yeah, 
I, I would like to hear from Jose of Metal or is, um, why, why, why are you involved in this Swiss Better Gold initiative? You're on, you're on mute, Jose. Okay, no, 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 I'm back. No, actually, we, we have been a founding member of uh, BGI uh, since 2013. I mean, we have been already working in the past. And, uh, and actually, uh, it has been, uh, actually, as you know, back in 2019, uh, we took a decision, which was uh, a, a very hard decision on our side, yes, to simply to withdraw from artisanal mines at that point in time even though we have been working uh, for more than 20 years uh, in Latin America in particular, in, in Latin America, in Peru, in Colombia, in other countries. But we came to the conclusion that because of the complexity of the supply chain, because of the uh, need of ongoing and additional resources just to control uh, the due diligence process and the supply chain, and also the challenging conditions of the countries and, and the, the SAM in particular, so at the end of the day, uh, this uh, led us to reassess our approach. And we said, look, uh, under these conditions, uh, we cannot really continue anymore uh, because this is something that uh, we cannot do it alone as we used to do it, uh, simply because, again, I mean, the complexity was, was very high. And actually, we as a refiner, I mean, we cannot do everything. So we decided at that point in time just to leave, nevertheless, uh, a door open and we said, look, if the conditions are in place, and we are talking about a concerted action, uh, not only on the side of Metalor, but also with NGO associations and other institutions, including institutions at the local level that is giving us the, the guarantee and the comfort of working together, we can engage again uh, into this kind of uh, business with additional mining. And actually, uh, since we did the announcement back in 2019, uh, we started to work and look for projects I mean, we, uh, we approach again uh, BGI and we came to the conclusion that, yes, I mean, uh, there was a potential project at that point in time, uh, which is uh, Jenna Kiwa. Uh, we have been working, uh, being on site, uh, understanding much better what uh, BGI is actually doing. And for us, uh, one of the great benefits is that they do have the expertise, which is not a given with any other NGO, let's put it this way. Uh, they have the resources, they have teams on the ground. So, and based on that, and our assessment and our presence and our review of the situation, I mean, we came to the conclusion that yes, this is something that is, is possible to do it. Maybe it can be challenged, but it's possible uh, doing under the metal standards. Uh, the fact that uh, SECO, uh, the Department of Economy of the Swiss government is behind, this is, this is providing us an extra layer in terms of comfort. Uh, so we decided just to move ahead with this project. Actually, I mean, this is uh, this is a business, uh, even though business-wise it's marginal, but we do it because uh, even volumes are still uh, modest. I mean, we believe it's the right thing to do for Metalo. Uh, I think your phone... Your sound is disconnected, Neil. I, I cannot really hear you. Yeah, I, I have to be unmuted. Okay, yeah. Okay, but no, no, th th thank you for that. Um, th there are quite a lot of questions coming in. So um, if, if, if you will indulge me, um, we, we've got a couple of questions that I, I think would really sort of um, add, add to the discussion. Um, so the fir first one would be to, to Diana, is that um, wh why, why South America? Why, why aren't we looking at Africa and, and, and Asia? Um, well, when we started the initiative in 2013, we, we started in because um, it's, uh, first, it's a major, one of the major producing countries. Uh, second, where the uh, artisanal scale, small scale mining, uh, the presence of the sector is, is very important. So we started the initiative there. Then on the second phase of the initiative, we uh, decided to extend uh, to Colombia and uh, Bolivia, again for the same reasons, producing countries, ASM sector. And uh, so, and now we are consolidating uh, within these three countries. And uh, well, who knows, maybe the next move will be Africa or Asia or who knows? I mean, I think there are so many things to fix, so we, why not? 
And the other thing that, sorry, one other question, which, which is also something very close to, to what I've been following over the last few years, is you, you've, you've got the, the $1 per gram. Who, who's paying that? Where, 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 is, is that? Is that coming out of the price of the gold or is, the, is it a premium that the refiner's paying? Who, who's paying the $1? The one dollar per gram. Very good question. Thank you. So the one dollar per gram is paid by the private companies who buy the, this gold. The the Better Gold Initiative is a B two B initiative. So our clients are uh, the uh, members of the Swiss Better Gold Association. So these are uh, uh, companies uh, uh, like. Well, we have seen the slides, so we have different watch jewelry brands, we have fi financial institutions, refiners. So the premium is paid by the end client, uh, meaning the, these, these companies and these brands. And uh, so this is really the, the, the money that the private business is generating to support artisanal small scale mining. Okay, th thank you, Diane. And, and Jose, would you like to comment on that? It, it may be, uh, I think, what is the added value? The added value is that with this kind of project, actually, uh, and the added value for the customer, for the end customer is on one side, I mean, they do have what we may call a responsible ethical goal. I mean, this is number one, which is which is very important. Uh, but in addition, I think that the other uh, important component is with this scheme and engaging in this scheme, I mean, they are able, yes, to make an impact and to improve the working conditions of the miners on site. So, so at the end of the day, the combination of these two elements, I think, uh, is what is really making attractive this uh, for customers. And actually, I can tell you, I mean, we are seeing already uh, a demand for that. I mean, there are some companies approaching us and approaching BGI as well, uh, seeking additional information, uh, trying to understand a better what is the scheme, uh, what are the benefits, and the feedback we are getting so far is uh, is very positive. So this is this is encouraging us just to continue to work on this basis. Okay, so so as as a refiner, it is sustainable from a commercial. Absolutely, basis. absolutely. Okay, absolutely. So that, that's good to hear. Um, again, Jose, if we could stay with you. Again, we I know we haven't got much time left for this. Some great questions coming through, and I, I think that's a, that's a, a a good reflection on on the panelists. Um, who has the enforcement powers to keep non-compliant gold from being greenwashed through your supply chains? And that, that's their words, not mine. So, uh, maybe I will take this question. Um, so the, the 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 team the bgi team is on the on the ground and they do a very valuous work of accompanying the miners uh, through the the escalator i've just uh, shown uh, so there is a, a relationship there is uh, there is a continuous uh, um uh, they they know the operation and they uh, they may the uh, operation evolves through the system together through these uh, different stages. So uh, when the, the operation becomes eligible uh, supplier of better gold, it's not a, a, sur a, a surprise. So it's an operation that we have accompanied for, for a while. So we know the source, you know. Uh, so, and then uh, for the verification part, um, we, we, thought, we think that it's very important that there is a verification that this source is indeed eligible. And that is through a network of independent verifiers. So the BGI has the role to, uh, to 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 groom these operations, let's say, and say, okay, well, we, we, we bring it to this level, and then there is a uh, independent verification saying, yes, indeed, it is compliant with this what expectation set. And um, that obviously meets the requirements of you of metal ore's due diligence uh, processes. Yes, yes, indeed, this is the case. And in addition, I think something that is important and is, is a little bit different of this project versus other projects. Here, uh, when we're talking about additional miners, you are talking about mineral. You are not really talking about gold ore. So actually, what uh, Janaki was doing is getting the mineral from the different artisanal miners, which are really working in their concession. Uh, by the way, transportation and control is made by Janakiwa. So this is something that is not done by the miners. So actually, I mean, they know exactly from where the mineral is coming. I mean, this is uh, going to the processing plant of Janakiwa, Janakiwa being refined into, into gold array, 
and at the end of the day uh, ship to us and being part of the BGA scheme. So uh, at the end of the day, I think is they have, we verify the process, it's a strong one. I mean, as uh, Diana was mentioning, uh, the, the, uh, the role of BGI is supervise, monitor, accompany the miners and uh, to, to improve and to continue to keep the system up to speed. And this is this is uh, what uh, Metalor is actually supporting. Okay, thank you. Um, again, I, I would love to carry on this conversation, but we're, we're running out of time and we need to wrap up. So I'd just like to finish with um, one last question to, to the two of you. Um, how are you going to share your successes with other initiatives? How are we going to ensure widespread change in the ASM sourcing space? Um, I think uh, I'll I think initiatives like the one today, where we we, we share what we, we we know. I wouldn't say best practices. I mean, this is what we can do. This is what we do. And so, by 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 spreading the word, engaging the private sector to 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 to, to be active in in in, in this ASM uh, uh, gold mining or, or ASM mining in general, uh, uh, spreading the word. I think this is how it. It will grow. I mean, we we just hear uh, hear Jose. I mean, uh, it, it it there is a business case. There is a social case. There is an environmental case. There is no reason why we should disengage from from the sector. Jose, uh, and actually, uh, from from the side of Metalor, yes, we believe that the system can be replicated. Why not? Uh, it's not simple. It's not simple because what you need is you need the right teams uh, on the ground with the necessary expertise, uh, which is not easy to get. Uh, but if this could be the case, I mean, uh, why not? I mean, this this kind of process is not unique in the world. I mean, this is something that can be can be done again in other places. But uh, the fundamental point again is is having the right teams uh, on the ground uh, with the necessary expertise and assistance. Uh, and, uh, and on this basis, I mean, uh, again, why not? Yeah. Okay. Thank. Yeah. I, I think just just to sum up, with 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 the right will and the right support, this responsible sourcing can happen. And and this the, the Swiss Better Gold initiative is, is proof of that. And I really like to to thank Diana and and Jose. And um, I would like to hand you back now to, to Taylor to, to to wind up. So thank you very much. Yeah, thank you um, very much for joining us today. We we really appreciate your contributions uh, to to the webinar and also to the uh, to ASM. Um, uh, I do see that there's a few questions that have come through that we we were just unable to get to today, but we will follow up with you um, after the webinar. Um, and uh, as you can see on the screen, we have a few uh, webinars upcoming. Um, in the next couple of weeks, and we will be continuing the discussion on um, ASM. And next week, um, we will be um, hearing from uh, Joanne LeBaire, who will be doing a case study of um, the efforts in Côte d'Ivoire and the DRC. Um, the following week, we'll be looking at um, the gold jewellery um, uh, industry right now, and we'll be hearing from Philip Alden, Iris van der Wieken, Mark Hanna, and Neil Harvey once again. Um, and um, so I just want to take this time to thank you. And again, if you do have any questions that you weren't able to ask, please email ask at lbmain.org.uk. So one final time to our panelists, Jose, Diana and Neil, and of course, uh, Monica, who, who is not with us today. Um, I just want to say thank you. We really are very thankful for you being able to join us. Um, have a lovely afternoon and uh, we'll see you next week. Thank you from all. Thank you. Thank you all. Goodbye. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye.